neat little opportunity here. We have uh, an opportunity to go out and see a local fish store out uh, in the East Coast or on the East Coast uh, in New York City. So it's going to be live from New York. Uh, this is Neptune Systems. <laughs> and uh, we've got Tom out here. I will be uh, throwing to Tom here in a second, but we're going to be going to Manhattan Aquariums. Uh, Manhattan Aquariums is uh, you know, been around for a long, long time. It's right in the middle of uh, Midtown Manhattan. And uh, the owner, Joe Caparata, is going to be on our live stream today. And we're going to talk to him about his store and about some Apex stuff and uh, kind of give you some insight uh, as, as to how he does things at his store. It's kind of the thing we want to be doing lately, which is bringing you guys inside some of these awesome local fish stores to show you what they're doing and how they're really helping the hobby along and bringing, uh, you know, bringing uh, new hobbyists into the hobby, helping uh, seasoned uh, hobbyists. Uh, Joe actually has a bunch of accounts there that he takes care of in, uh, in Manhattan. And uh, for those of you that don't know, Joe also runs an, uh, Unique Corals out in California and, and lives in California now, used to live in New York. He, he'll probably tell us all this story when I ask him some questions. Um, but for now, I, what I want to do is I want to throw it over to Tom, who's out uh, there in the street. I guess this is, we were just laughing, it's kind of Letterman-esque. Um, uh, I've got Tom, who's the regional sales manager for the East Coast. Uh, we're finishing up the year, and Tom wanted to go into Joe's place, so he's out on the street right now. Let me kick over on my little system here to a split screen with Tom and turn his mic up. There we go. How you doing out there, Tom? It's a little cold, but I'm doing all right. Yeah, Tom's out there in his Neptune Systems uh, polo shirt in freezing cold temperatures. And I'm here inside the office in California, and we're having freezing cold temperatures. I think it was down to 57 today. So uh, I had to put the, the hoodie on, get all warm, and uh, Tom's over there in the, in the polo. So Tom, what's in the background? Where are we in New York right now? Say that again? Where are we in New York right now? What's in the background Right now there? we are at West 37th and 10th Avenue on uh, what used to be referred to as Hell's Kitchen. I know it's kind of hard to see today, but uh, there's a whole lot of new construction going on around here. Uh, I believe that's going to be one of the highest residential buildings in the city. Um, cloud layer is a little low, but this is really turning into a great area to live over here. So cool, so cool. So they're, they're kind of wedged in between um, uh, Times Square, which we all know, right? Correct. And yeah. uh, then, like the Javits uh, Center. <laughs> Center on the street as well, um, and uh, the newest New York City subway station, uh, the 7 train, has its newest station, uh, I believe, three blocks down and to the right. So about a five-minute walk if you live in uh, in the five boroughs. Driving here is, um, you know, uh, a little difficult, but taking the 7, uh, you can get in here and you can go to the world's uh, the world's newest uh, subway station down here. Um, and it's, uh, you know, right down the block, so can't really beat that. Aren't they, like, right next to or over, like, some tunnel? I'm sorry, I'm not big on the geography of New York, but isn't, like, some major tunnel right near them? Yeah, so the Lincoln Tunnel, if you're coming from Lincoln New Jersey, tunnel. is uh, right on the other side of the river. Uh, they are actually really the last business going towards the, the tunnel, so anytime you've probably left New York City, if you've taken a car and gone towards George, Jersey, you've driven right past the store. The only thing I know about the Lincoln Tunnel is what I saw in Seinfeld. So yeah. <laughs> that's as much as I know about the Lincoln, the Lincoln Tunnel. But anyway, Tom's going to be walking over now. He's walking over to Manhattan Aquariums. They're doing a bunch of construction around there. They have a bunch of uh, uh, scaffolding and stuff outside. It's pretty typical New York. Um, they're always working on something on some of the buildings. And, uh, he's, you know, it's, it's, it's really funny. I, long before I became or became again an aquarist, I used to go to the Javits Center to do trade shows for the computer industry. And I actually walked by this place so many times and never even knew there was an aquarium store there. Um, because it is kind of nondescript and you really, you know, you kind of have to look for it or know it's there. Um, but once you go inside, you can't believe um, what he's got in this place right in the middle of Manhattan. Because real estate in Manhattan, Tom, right, is super expensive. Um, so yeah, uh, a lot of the buildings that were over here, including Manhattan, were an imminent domain for them to uh, build a lot of these new projects. Um, and I. I would be quoted wrong, but some of them are, are you know, in uh, many hundreds of thousands of dollars per square foot. Some of the lots that are uh, an average apartment size or so go for, you know, 50, 60, 80 million dollars. 
That's that's crazy. Well, we're getting some people in here. Thank you, Jose Perez. I think Jose won on our Let's Talk Reef. He won some free swag. Hunter Parker out on YouTube. See you here. We've got Roel from uh, from the Netherlands, who's a, a big control freak with all this cool gear that you guys probably have seen on um, on Facebook. These things he's, he does. We've got Ted Bergstrom from out in Sweden on here. I'm just remembering all uh, you know all these people, and it's got to be super late where they are. Uh, so they're they're tuning in here to our live stream, and uh, okay, looks like Tom. Tom, you uh, you arrived. I have arrived. Okay. Well, I was talking through the whole arrival inside here, and uh, okay. Well, let's see. Let's see if you can you can tell us a little bit. So Tom, you used to work at the store, right? Before we introduce Correct. the main man. Yep. So uh, I worked here for a little over three years, uh, doing um, work in retail store. Uh, this is one of the prettiest retail stores probably in the world. Um, doing service installations uh, and uh, quite a few apexes. Yeah, Tom. Tom really cut his teeth on the apex world uh, at Manhattan Aquariums and uh, did tons of crazy installs where there was almost zero room to put any gear under the aquariums in these small apartments where you just you know space is a premium. Um, and so one of the hardest jobs for doing Apex stuff I think anybody can have. Um, but uh, let's throw it over now. Let's, let's introduce uh, the man of uh, Manhattan Aquariums. We've got Joe Caparata here, another Italian hey guy like me. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Great. Just flew in specifically for this. Ah, no, ah. I happen to come to the city tonight. We're having our Christmas party and um, couldn't turn this down, man. This is an awesome opportunity. Thanks for having me. It's so, it's so great to have you on, uh, you know, on a live stream. We're doing a lot more of these things. We're going into a lot of local fish stores. I'm having both Tom as well as Vincent out here on the West Coast um, visit some great stores and uh, talk about what they've got going on, talk about uh, how they do their business, what's important to them, um, what's important to customers. And, you know, I just, you know, when talking to Tom, I wanted to use this opportunity. I know you got a lot of stuff going on. I really appreciate you coming on the live stream uh, for all cool. the customers. Um, give us a little background, Joe. So how long have you had this store, man? So the store is here since 2005. Um, it was, uh, I had the business a few years before that on another street. It was on 33rd street and it had always occupied the second or the fourth floors uh, until I had enough cash, you know, say cash positive to justify a ground floor space in Manhattan. So right. we've been here since 2005. Um, the service had always been the backbone. But only in the last probably four or five years has the store really grown legs of its own to almost justify or really justify the rent and the overhead on its own, which, as you can imagine, is pretty exorbitant. It's in, crazy. In I can't like believe this. I can't believe that anybody could even, you know, survive having um, a local fish store in what are the costs? I mean, we think the costs are crazy here in the Bay Area, but I mean, right there in you know, the middle of, uh, of New York, it's just the overhead's got to be unreal. So, I, you know, huge kudos to you guys to be able to keep this thing open. Because as you know, kind of like restaurants, you know, the half-life of a local fish store is not very good generally. Yeah, agreed. You know? And that's why you have to go into it with a real solid approach and uh, not dream, uh, because dreams, most of them don't pan out. Right. So you just gotta start small um, and, um, and just basically have a plan. And I always knew that the service in New York City would be amazing if I could pull it off and then, uh, projecting that strength with a retail store and a showroom would only add. And I try to use the fact that it's hard to survive in a big city like this with high rents as an advantage. I mean, uh, obviously, it's, it's a high bar for a competitor to have to, to climb and, and meet. So right. I use those things. I welcome them. Uh, welcome them. Yeah, welcome so if you could, yeah, exactly. So if you were able to at least make it happen a little bit, then competitors, yeah. you know, it, it'd be that much harder because you'd have to, you know, you already have a, you know, a foothold in the space. So that's, that's really interesting. So yep. tell us, um, so you run Unique Corals, obviously, in the West Coast, which is, um, you know, a mail order, uh, you know, coral facility, basically, you, uh, Mariculture Corals, right? Yeah, so we import corals and we try to do as much of the fragging and growing in-house as we can. Um, but we're importing, we're selling wholesale, we're selling retail. That business uh, operates out of a 6,000 square foot warehouse, uh, and it's been there since 2012. In Van Nuys, so right? I, I, yeah, I had this business here. I'm the sole owner, and I would go back and forth, and um, I really, I mean, I, I might sound like I'm standing here taking credit for it, but I wouldn't be here without my employees. I mean, they really deserve all the credit. I wish we could get them all in, but half of them have already worked a full day, and they're not here. Right. Uh, tonight, we're actually going to have a Christmas party and kind of celebrate the hard work, and, and, and they'll... Uh, 
have a few drinks together. But um, yeah, I couldn't do it without them. And in the beginning, from 2012 to 2015, I, I flew back quite a bit while I really fine-tuned things. And I had no idea how it was going to work out. I kind of uh, just rolled the dice, took some calculated risks. I took on a partner in L.A., uh, thinking I'd have to spend more time here. But uh, again, if you have the right people on your bus, and, and I can't emphasize it enough, that you can only do so much with your two hands. You really need to have the right people working alongside of you. And I don't say working for you. They're really working with you. Absolutely. So, uh, I, I Absolutely. And uh, with the coral business, so you, you send corals from Unique Corals out to Manhattan Aquarium so the people on the East Coast can basically, you, you, that's also, it's a kind of vertically integrated business for you, right? Yeah, so because shipping is a little prohibitive for, for, for people, um, we give the added benefit if you support Unique Corals and you put in an order here in the store, there's no minimum. Uh, we send corals every week, usually on Tuesday, to Manhattan Aquariums. We label the bags, and the staff here is notified, and people just come in and pick up their bags. So you so can they pretty can much on shipping. They can get up. So a, you can WYSIWYG frag if they want. You can WYSIWYG shop basically on your Unique Corals website, and then wait a week, and you'll see it arrive in the store. Uh, yep. You know, right there for you. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yep. Yep. So one of the yeah, things that is going well. I'm sorry. I was just going to change gears a little bit. One of the things that um, obviously probably more than um, than most people in the business, even local fish stores, people like Tom and myself and Vincent, we see more local fish stores than anybody else in the country, right? Because we travel around, we go to all of these, and we see what we think works and and doesn't work in these stores just by way of which ones we know are becoming successful. Um, and continuing to be successful, and which ones you know are kind of tailing off and whatnot, and you know we've developed some theories, and and you fall in line with some of those uh, for sure, and it's one of the reasons I wanted to talk with you. But one of the things I want you to, to to maybe touch on for us is you know your philosophy on what you carry in the store, because I see a lot of um, of local fish stores, especially out here on the West Coast, um, more than I would say the East Coast, who have focused just on livestock, right? They don't have any parts or they don't have, I mean, for the most part, or dry goods or high-end equipment or anything for the customer to come in and purchase. What's your feeling on that? Well, I think it's, it's, it's almost impossible to survive on livestock alone. Uh, that doesn't mean you're going to go and invest a lot of your cash on dry goods because the reality of, of it is that the margins are not like they were 15 years ago, 10 years ago. I'm competing against, you know, online suppliers with same map pricing and, you know, um, you know, right. even the sales tax factors into the equation. So I'm, I'm a realist. I get it. But has you have that, to realize this. Has hobby, that changed a little, though, Joe? You know, there's a, been a little bit of a pullback. You know, we're kind of moving the, the chains back a little bit, which is starting to align. And some of the smarter players are realizing that if they don't support the stores, we're not going to have customers tomorrow. Right. It's kind of like the fishermen who realize that if I don't put this small fish back tomorrow, my kids or even myself won't have keepers three years from now. So, you know, we, we, we can't just all rush and chase every price down the drain. Well, also, the we, also in the dry yeah. goods side, the other thing to mention is, you know, as much as we think many of us, and you probably have the best handle compared to a lot of local fish stores on your costs for, li you know, for, for the livestock and losses and all of these things, but margin is not margin for, you know, what you think you're actually making and what you really are making are all, often two different things. That's number yeah. one. And number two, you're at the mercy of the supply chain, as you see right now with Fiji and Indonesia and whatnot happening. I'm sure that the, that the costs uh, for the stores have gone up or even not even being able to have inventory like they did before. Is that true? Yes. I mean, if we're, if we're shifting back to livestock, absolutely. The, the livestock supply has been just like cut at the knees. Live rock and uh, diversity in live rock is just completely down. Uh, so that's what a lot of people are scrambling and turning towards mariculture product and um, you know, just educating that you don't need to have every species of coral. Just have like a bio-specific tank or, um, you know, just, just, just an acromonte tank. You don't just have to have everything in there. So a lot of it comes from the education that this people in the store will pass on to the customers. Right. But to get back to the margin with the dry goods, there is good money to be made. And because a lot of it is impulse, a lot of people don't want to wait. And you'd be surprised a lot of people do want to support their stores. And I think it's a cop-out to say, well, I'm just not going to sell dry goods because people can get it cheaper online. If those people are taking the time to come into your store, you should pretty well believe that they want to support you. They're there for a reason. So as long as you don't price, you know, price yourself out of the equation, I found people have said they're willing to pay 5%, 10%, 15% more because they value the experience and the knowledge that the store owner is able to pass on. Right, and, and so don't sell yourself short. And as, a ma as I said, the map, you know, the map pricing is there. 
Um, yep. You know, that, that's certainly a huge component. Now the, the sales tax thing that has <laughs> gone into play uh, to even the playing field a little bit with online as far as sales tax is concerned. Um, and, you know, I do hear a lot of people complain about online as I go around the country, but I'm like, okay, at the same time, think about how much resources are available from some of these online vendors that are doing videos and education and everything. Yeah. A person's coming okay. into your store already halfway through the sales process for you. All you have to do is close it, you know? Yep. So I yep. think it's, a, it's this great dynamic that's happening that the local fish stores and the online are, are helping each other now. It's not just, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna sell it for the cheapest price. And, and kill the local fish store guy. It's like, we're gonna build value across the board for manufacturers and everybody. And I think that's, I, right. you know, that's why I like to see stores like yours, you know, cause it's, although the margins are different, it's all incremental revenue too, right? Yep. So if yep. you don't have yeah, it, you, you can't make it. Very interesting. What yep. about demos? Cause I know you guys, can you, sh why don't you guys show me the demo that you have of the Neptune stuff? Let's talk about Neptune stuff, huh? <laughs> yep, good. Oh, you got another new tank in there since the last time I was there, I see. I'd like to get in here, too, at some point. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you want to ham it up? Got the pretty face. So uh, this tank's really come along. I think I don't think you've seen it even, Taryn, since the last time we were here for Reef of Palooza. But, um, you know, the growth on the tank now and, I mean, everything that's in here is, you know, a prized possession for most. Uh, I that's can't awesome. I say I really have. It, it looks phenomenal, and it's just it's really grown in. Um, what's the name of these, these hermit crabs? I don't know if you've seen them. You just got here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. A little with um, the bumblebees? They're, or? Uh, they're hermit crabs, right, with uh, feather dusters, right, that are, that are living on here. Oh, so this one right here, this is our, our Australian, like our feather feather rock, our worm rock. Uh, so that's actually Cyphastria on there, and then you have your feather feather worms. Oh, how neat. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Those are Christmas tree worms. Hey, right? so I have to, hey guys, I have to say one thing. I did see this particular tank <laughs> on a particular reefing blog recently, though, but... I didn't see any of our gear for some strange reason. Is it? Do we have our gear on here? Your gear is absolutely on here and extremely okay. vital to the success of this. Because I saw this whole long video and it just, I didn't see any of it on the video. It was really bizarre. It's crazy. So what are we doing here? What are we dosing, Joe? So we're dosing Triton. Uh, this is actually Triton method. Uh, we're just using these plastic bottles and I'm sure I'm going to get some laughs and some funny comments now. But as you guys know, Triton's an amazing product. Um, I was at the, the company, the person to bring it into the I US use it. Along with, with ICP testing. Um, so we're dosing a four-part balanced mix. Uh, I think you're dosing it on your tank, too, along with your calcium reactor. Absolutely, right, yes. Cool. So what's great about this is if you can get the tank to get pretty much all of its trace elements and minerals from the daily dosing, mm -hmm. You can daily dosing, you can avoid the highs and the lows that are typically associated with just spot dosing or replenishment through water changes. Unless, of course, it's a daily water change, which Neptune actually uh, makes it super easy to do. That's the one thing that you just can't beat. I mean, if you could just swap water a little bit right. every day, that's like that's gold. But most people are not doing that. So being able to dose your alkalinity, your calcium, along with your magnesium, potassium, strontium, iron, molybdenum all in the similar ratios that they would be used in a typical diverse reef tank. That's what makes this product pretty It really pretty awesome. is. It really is stupid simple. I mean, I, that's the reason I use it, quite frankly. I mean, I, you know, I'm fairly talented in reef keeping, but I'm also lazy. And the fact that it's balanced and in ratio means every one of my dose systems can be identical. I don't have to think about it. I adjust them all up when I need to, and it just works, you know. And, and the combination together, the dose along with the um, the Triton additives is just, I think it's a, it's a total win-win. And as you say, if you don't want to go that route and you want to dose, you know, individual other um, uh, trace elements and run a calcium reactor and run uh, water changes through the, the, the dose, that's also another really mm -hmm. popular way to go um, yep. with it. So, I mean, so demos, I think, are really important in, in the successful local fish store. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, getting people oh. to get their hands on it and see it. Absolutely. I, I can remember, you know, this is a hobby of mine. I, I got my first fish tank when I was 11. I worked in a fish store every day after school, making $3 an hour, riding my bike there instead of sports. And uh, there was a store called Pets Plus in Freeport, Long Island. And this mm -hmm. is right 1987, 1986. And that store had displays in there. And it was all lit with regular fluorescent tubes. This is before even T5 and Power Compact. Right. Um, and that, 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 those tanks inspired me so much that I almost needed it, like I, I craved going in there to see how those tanks developed. So I always knew that if I built a store that I would have to, I'd want to create the ambiance that you get at a public aquarium. I don't want people to come in and just have products in their face.
space. So right. we built some really killer displays. We had a 500 gallon cylinder tank right in the middle of the store. We had a 1200 gallon reef tank that was my pride and joy. I spent my Friday, Saturday nights in there just diving, moving coals around. And that was the first thing you came, you'd see when you'd come in. And I think a lot of people were inspired and they were so revved up, ready to make their tank look like that, you know. Um, yeah. It's, it's worth its weight in gold. And but what I, what I think. You can't spend too much money and justify something that you want versus what the store really needs. Like there's a point of diminishing returns. You can't put $1,000 angelfish in a display tank because you like them. You're right. not going to see the return on investment on it. So it's it, got to be smart. Yeah, that's exactly the point I was, I was just going to say is what's really smart is the demo tank that you have there is an approachable tank for the type of customer, 70% of the customers that are going to come in. Yeah. You know, it's not just, hey, look at this gorgeous tank that I'll never be able to own. It's look at this thing. It's attainable. Look at the gear that's on it. Now you can kind of say, well, I'll get this and this now. Maybe I'll get that later. This is the cool thing that I want to have on this. Oh, this is the light they're doing. And oh, by the way, it must work because you couldn't just glue these corals in here yesterday and have them look like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think yeah. it's super critical not just to have a great looking kind of, I mean, you can have one massive great display tank just to be like the statement, like you said, but you need to have those approachable, realistic uh, demo tanks around with the gear showing on them so it really explains to them what it is they need to have this thing and that it is attainable. For you sure. hit it on the head. You, you, you need to, and all the products have to be designed to represent what the customer would get in his house. Like we can't have, because maybe I like UVs, I'm not going to put a 200 watt UV on this size tank just to make the tank a little better because the customer would never put a 200 watt UV on this tank. So everything's got to be curated to be well represented to what they would actually get or replicate what they would actually get. And having different sizes so you can appeal to a wider, wider audience is obviously way better. It's, it's definitely the case. Hey, one, one interesting thing, I'm looking at all of our, uh, our comments and, and questions and stuff coming in. Um, one of the uh, one of the person says that's the best Triton tank I've seen. Um, well, he hasn't seen mine. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> mine is uh, mine's going crazy. I have it two years under you know with my tank and with the Triton system. I have stuff that was just little tiny frags and it's now like eight ten inches you know across. And uh, yep. you know Tom was just out. He saw it. And uh, yeah, it's a really great system to go. The other thing too that uh, I haven't seen a single question on which. I can't even believe, if you can believe this, is where is the Trident, right? Where's our testing system? Where is it? Where's the what? Yeah, exactly. The Trident. <laughs> exactly. So well, yeah, that, I'm going to show you guys, we are one of the first people, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but we've had a Trident on here for three years now. Can you come down here? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yes, come exactly. <laughs> So, uh, so I got to always, on every one of these, I got to tell people, they're almost, uh, you know, we're actually, we're working this week, we're working next week even, um, between the holidays, and the guys are actually putting together our first um, Neptune Systems Insiders units that are going out into the field uh, to some of our key Neptune Systems Insiders people. And then in um, uh, the first couple of weeks of January, we'll have a bunch more that are going to go out to those people. And then we're going to be putting it through its awesome. paces on real tanks. Um, other than the real tanks that we have here in my place and seeing that everything is the way it's supposed to be. Everything is really going good now on it. Um, with a lot of work on the algorithms and y you can, the, the amount of complexity in this is unreal. Um, cool. And there, we finally got one. By the way, where is the Trident? But anyway, I always have to tell people we're working hard on it. I swear we've got so much invested in this. You have no idea. And it's that close. It's just so close. So I know everybody's well, I, excited to get I one. I give you guys so much credit for doing it right because you can't come to market with a product unless you feel 100% really good about it. And, you know, we look at all these other technologies that we use every day. They don't come to market in six months. Sometimes they're five years, four years, eight right. years r and I mean, you know, this this is a sophisticated piece of equipment. And I think most people that are going to use this understand that. And they're, they're probably very happy that it's not rushed because nobody wants to be a true guinea pig for this. I mean, they, they want to know what works. Yeah, so I mean, I think we are the hobby for... of guinea pigs. I mean, quite frankly, we are the hobby of right. guinea pigs. And, and it's part yeah. as, partly as a result of the size of the market. Um, if, you, if the hobby wasn't a little bit of a guinea pig, then there wouldn't be any new products. That's just the way it is, because there's just not yeah. enough, there's just not enough customers to be able to support, a, you know, the kind of, you know, like a iPhone level R&D and, and testing and stuff. It's just not. So, um, there is a little bit of that, but we basically are trying to do everything we can to make this the best product ever, bring it in at a price point where it needs to be, um, and, uh, you know, and make people as happy as we can with this product. 
But uh, okay, Joe, with the rest of your store, what else have you done new in the back of your store? Anything that people that haven't been there in a while should be coming to see? Uh, well, we just renovated the freshwater systems. We had some old Dutch systems. They worked fine, but they didn't really offer us a lot of usable space underneath, and we had a lot of redundancy and infiltration um, you know, the areas. Uh, and for freshwater, we just didn't need that much volume. So we needed the floor space for, for dry scape material, for hard scape material. So we opted to match the rest of the store, which is done in an 80-20 aluminum, which I think you guys can see now. Um, and my guy Mike really spearheaded this and, and just knocked it out of the park. So we've got three tiers of freshwater uh, holding with the 80-20 aluminum. Super strong. I highly recommend this stuff. It's a little mm -hmm. bit pricey, but um, it's pretty inert to water damage, and it's insanely strong, and, uh, and it just looks great. It looks really, really high end, and they offer all kinds of mounting solutions for you know, uh, for wire cleanup and plumbing mounts. So we haven't really utilized some of that yet. This was just completed like a month or two ago, um, but it's worked out really well. We've got freshwater plants in the back. We've got two uh, flats with Ecotech lights for coral frags and colonies. And we replenish this every week with corals uh, from Unique Corals. Uh, we also bring in mm -hmm. some direct shipments here. And we've got our inverts. We've got saltwater fish over here. And we've got rodelians, anemones. And yeah, well, and that's, I, I really so. like how clean it looks, Joe. It's really clean and using the 8020 al aluminum is so smart. It costs a ton of money. I know what that stuff costs. Um, yeah. And you know, you often see people come in and they're like, you, you know, their capital is really low and that's fine, you know, but still the difference between that and two by fours and cinder blocks and yeah. Uh, or even the guy who has used steel stands and you know, they're, they're eight, 10 years on and they look, just look horrible. It's just yeah. a really good look. I really commend you on doing a great job on, on the inside of that store. Cool. People really respect that when they come into a place like that. And quite frankly, you and I both know it makes them want to spend more money and that's, that's, that's just okay. You know, that's, that's the way yeah. it should be. Um, yeah. How about dry goods? Show us some of the dry goods. Show us, show us some Neptune systems, orange and gray there, Tom. So you guys need any Neptune Systems products in the New York area, you can come down here to Manhattan. You know, you can go over to Junior's Deli, get yourself a cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're always fully stocked here. Uh, we try to keep a few of everything in stock, and we've always got orders pending. So we like to think that we're like the B&H of, of dry goods here for the aquarium industry. Uh, I love B&H. We have a whole wall of Apex. I love, love B&H. What a great store. I, every time I come to New York, I, I try to go there, but it looks awesome. And look at that. Show us some of the other, the other stuff you got in dry goods, just so people can know that, hey, look, you know, this is, uh, you oh, know. Sorry, we're going we're gonna to change gears for a sec. This is our waterfall tank. I've never seen uh, this. Just a planted waterfall tank. Pretty cool. Something different. It's beautiful. Yeah. So this is all built in. Excellent. That used to be another type of freshwater tank or saltwater tank before. What was it? Uh, this was a saltwater reef tank when I was here. Ah. And then we just shifted over to freshwater. And you'd be surprised. The freshwater is really, that scene is really starting to take off, especially in these small apartments in the city where people just don't want to take on the reef tank. Right. People that find that they want to get wet, they want to get a tank, they stop with a beautiful plant and aquarium. And a lot of those people carry over and get a small reef tank. So we're finding that there's... Um, there's a, there's a lot of um, synergy between those two, you know, starting with the, the high-end plants. I'm, I'm talking about a nice high-end right, no, yeah, or a hardscape. The, yep. the, the ones I would love to have, but I tell people, look, when I moved to California, mm -hmm. I got a gardener. I'm not doing the lawn anymore, let alone in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people yeah. love those things. I see them when I go to China and stuff, and I love looking at them, but I just think to myself, that's just not going to be for me. I, I think I'll stick with the reef thing. I, <laughs> I love the look. Yeah, some of them, you know, I had the, I was fortunate enough to go see Takashi Amano's studio in, um, in Japan. Ah. And I mean, those guys, they, they spend six, seven, eight hours a day sometimes in their, their tank. They're in there. Oh, I know. Each, each thing. So it's whatever you make of it. I mean, you, you can take it to that level or you can just go without the CO2 and just do you know, some non-stem Funny story about the Amano thing. The funny story about the Amano thing is I talked to somebody who went out to do his week-long class or whatever, you know, when he was still alive, and they were telling me it was like, uh, it was like, uh, it was like uh, Karate Kid with Mr. Miyagi, that, you know, he's like, before you can even plant a plant, you need to go out in the driveway and pick up every pebble or something like that, ah. you know? <laughs> it, it was you really... You really appreciate 
Right. And focus on what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. I, I it was just like that. that, and it was just like the greatest thing to hear, you know. But That's uh, awesome. any. Anyway, you know, I got to close this up. We're at about 30 minutes here. And, I, you know, I want to thank you for letting us come into your place. I want to encourage all of uh, the people in the area to come down to, you know, to Joe's store down there in, uh, in Manhattan. Tell us again exactly where it is, Joe. So with the what? 522. Oh, uh, it's hard to hear with the waterfall. 522 West 37th Street between 10th and 11th Avenues. Um, parking is always tough anywhere in the city. We used to have a parking lot, which was just a blessing, but... Uh, that's been that, that's been chained up, so we can't use it anymore. Seven uh, trains, seven trains the way to go. Yeah, seven trains is what it is now. You can get off right here on the corner, and um, come on down. We're, okay. we're here seven days a week. All right. Well, next time we're going to have you walk around Unique Corals, Joe. How about that? Looking forward to it. Okay. Well, we'll awesome. take take you on that. Thanks again for uh, joining us on this live stream. Thanks, Tom, for helping us bring uh, you know bring them to us and. Until next time, you guys, uh, probably after the new year, I have a great uh, Christmas, a happy new year um, mm -hmm. to all of our control freaks. Um, you know, until I see you again, enjoy those fish. Catch you later. Awesome. See you, Terrence. See you later. Cool. So my arm. I know. I, 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 I mean, you like this, not that whole <laughs> right? But just stand there for 40 minutes with your arm fully oh, stretched. Oh, no. It helps you out for a second. <laughs>